Welcome back with a smiley face, a link is provided in the video description for previous episodes. Giving up on the Alpha. Episode 12 Chapter 121 Luther POV I want to thank you, I say as we drive back home. All of you. I know you all have much more important things to do than helping me fight my demons. Your demons are my demons, Adele smiles at me. We might not belong to the same pack anymore, but we will always be connected, Liana softly squeezes my shoulder. We stick together and support each other. We're here to help. Well, thank you, I smile emotionally. Truth is, I would have carried this with me for the rest of my life. Even if I do not find my sister, this opened my eyes to what I have. True friends. Friends that are willing to put their lives on hold to help me. How do you want to proceed? Axel looks at me. With the only lead I have, I sigh. The Red Ox. Not that I'm hopeful that they would still have records of 25 years ago. The Red Ox. Liana croaks and I look at her frowning. Yes, do you know the place? I ask curiously. I worked there, she clears her throat. I didn't know that, I smile. But first, Adele needs to get back and pick a beta. I'll be fine, Adele reassures me. You guys can go. No, I shake my head adamantly. This is not a priority. Your beta is Liana POV. I intertwine my fingers and look out of the window. I have stopped listening to Luther and Adele's conversation. The Red Ox. The restaurant I used to work at. The place where Brad attacked and assaulted me. I did not think I would ever have to go back there. But Brad is dead, and this is not about me. This is important to Luther, and I want him to be happy. I am not doing this out of boredom, I understand what it is to deal with the damage parents inflicted. Will that be in order with you, Liana? Axel pulls me out of my thoughts. Sorry, I smile apologetically. I was daydreaming and not listening. I said I'm going to help Adele with picking a beta, Axel explains. Luther will take you home. Fine by me, I agree. Then I'll be home for Connor's nap. Axel POV. I smile satisfied by Liana's answer. I did not forget that she worked at Red Ox. It might feel that her attack happened in another lifetime but I do not want her to relieve that day. The visit to Red Ox is something Luther and I will take care of. Luther and Adele get out of the car once I have parked, but Liana does not attempt to get out. Are you thinking about Brad? I ask softly. Yes, she admits softly. You don't have to go back, Liana, I reach over and take her hand. I'll do it. I know. She smiles bravely and opens the door. I sigh softly as I get out. Liana does not carry that night with her, but the memory will always be there. Do you want to go home immediately? Luther looks at Liana. Or do you have time to low okay at the new piece I started? I would love to see your work, Liana immediately brightens up. I have so little time for anything art since Connor was born. Right this way, Luther smiles us as he rests his hand on Liana's back and leads her towards the house. I cannot tell you how happy I am Liana shares that passion with him, Adele mumbles softly when she stands next to me. For me, a painting is either pretty or not. At least he she can satisfy his need to discuss color palettes and whatever. I know the feeling, I chuckle as we walk towards the training grounds except for Liana's drawings. Those I get. Because they're black and white. Adele laughs heartedly. There is already a line of hopeful candidates when we arrive. It is not every day that the position of Beta is available. Remember, 
I say softly. Don't focus on strength alone. It's also about speed and technique. And loyalty, I add. If only there were a physical test F or that. Even if we had one, they could still stab you in Tihi back, I shake my head. Adele POV. It has been hours, and it feels as if I am looking cross-eyed by the time everyone has an opportunity to show what they have. Here are my picks, Axel hands me a piece of paper. Hey, I chuckle. It's the same as mine. Then we have the correct five, Axel laughs and calls the candidates over. I thank the rest for participating before I look at the people in front of me. The two women are strong and fierce. And when I look them in the eye, they look back with confidence. The three men are the same except for one. He is just as muscular, but when I look him in the eyes, his gaze is not as arrogant as the others. You look familiar, I frown at him. Have we met before? No, Alpha, he replies firmly but politely. But you could have seen me when I visited my mate at Clear Moon. Who's your mate? I ask curiously Gwen, Alpha, he replies and lowers his gaze. With renewed interest, I look at him. This man is brave, I realize. He knows very well that Axel and I are aware of the things Gwen has done, and still, he admits she is his mate. This speaks volumes to me. He is not ashamed of Gwen. A lot of people might even hold his mate against him. What's your name? I ask. Neil, he replies as he looks up. Congratulations, Neil, I smile. You are my beta. Th, thank you, Alpha, he looks at me in surprise, and the others frown. The rest of you, report to me tomorrow morning, I order. You did well and impressed me. I still need a delta. The remaining three will also be part of my personal security. You are dismissed. Interesting choice, Axel smiles as we watch them leave. He will be loyal. I smile. And fair. He accepted Gwen despite her past. He found his mate because Liana gave her a second chance. Not only will he be loyal to this pack, but to yours. Which is important to me because that's where I come from. A lot of members still might perceive me as an intruder. Let me rephrase, Axel smirks. Wise choice. Thanks for the help today, I say as we walk back home. It helped a lot. Anytime, he grins. But you're a natural, Adele, you don't really need my help. Liana was right about you. I learned a lot from Liana while protecting her, I reply. In the beginning, I didn't always agree with her and at times I thought she was too compassionate. Especially when she told me to send people to keep an eye out for Ven. But with time, it started making sense to me. Like this thing with Luther's sister. I didn't even think to suggest finding her. Not because I didn't care, but because I didn't think IT mattered that much. But Liana and Luther are different in that way. They feel more than you and me. With Liana's past, she understands the need to forgive. Liana kept on carrying the blame for what her brother had done, and Luther was carrying the blame for what his parents did. Luther needs this, Axel. I pray that his sister had a good life and is in good health. Otherwise, I fear that he might never forgive his parents. And he will keep on punishing himself the way Liana did, Axel nods in understanding. You're right. We're different from them. I don't think I would ever complicate my life because of other people. Most people are like them, I sigh. Look at the world, everybody is carrying somebody else's guilt. And it's ridiculous. You can't undo the past, let alone your ancestors' sins. Except for us, Axel smiles mischievously. That's why we sleep better at night. 
Yes, I laugh heartedly. Something else, I continue once my laughter dies down. Who put a stick up Alpha Phillips as S? Your guess is as good as mine, Axel sighs. I reviewed his contract with Jack, and it was pretty standard. In fact, he would benefit more from doing business with Austin. I don't know why he's so stubbornly loyal towards Jack. Do you think it's wise to continue doing business with him after last nig HT? I frown. Not even almost, Axel laughs. But we offered him the same deal as we did with Jack's other business partners, and we can't back down now. In other words, keep a close eye on Philip, not in understanding. A very close eye Axel emphasizes. This is going to get interesting, I sigh theatrically. At least it's not going to be boring, Axel chuckles. Chapter 122 Liana POV What Happened at Red Ox? Luther asks as he drives me home. Other than your employment? Not much, I shrug and do my best to sound nonchalant. I only worked there for a couple of weeks. Then why did you go all dark and silent when you heard the name? He asks thoughtfully. I was attacked there, I admit, and my voice is monotone when I tell him the awful story. I thought I put it behind me. I haven't thought about it in forever, but when I heard the name, everything came back to me. I can relate, Luther smiles sourly. I thought I was over my parents' s asterisk it until the night before Adele's inauguration. It hits you like a tsunami out of nowhere. Axel said I don't have to go there again. I inhale deeply. But I think I should. Brad's dead, and I want to face it and get it behind me. Just like I want to find my sister, he nods. Closure or whatever. Or whatever. I laugh softly. Do you want to go now? Luther looks at me, hopefully. My insides twist and curl uncomfortably as I chew on my thumbnail. No, I do not want to go. But my mind is telling me I am being ridiculous, it is just a building. Back then I was a clueless and naive human. Many things have changed. I have changed. My fight-or-flight response is telling me to stay away from Red Ox. My subconscious is telling me to flee, but I choose to fight. Let's do it, I say with false bravado. The sooner I get this behind me, the better. Silently, I encourage myself, and by the time Luther parks the car, my heart is racing, and my hands are sweating. Say the word, and we leave. Luther looks at me intensely. Let's go before I change my mind, I grunt and get out. My breathing is surprisingly steady and calm when we enter the restaurant. Maybe because the decor age has changed so much, it is classier, and the cheap green and white decorations made way for expensive wood with cream and red. Liana, is that you? I turn towards the voice, and my jaw nearly hits the floor. Missy, I smile happily and walk towards her. It's so nice to see you again. This is my friend, Luther. I know who he is, she laughs heartedly. Everybody does. Luther and Adele's Cinderella story is an inspiration for everyone. I can't believe you are still here, I say in awe. I do not know what Elle expected, but seeing her was not it. Of course, she laughs. I'm CEO owner now. That's wonderful. I reply. Congratulations. All thanks to you, she laughs, but before I can ask her what she means, she winks us over. Follow me, I have the perfect table for you. Who's she? Luther whispers as we follow Missy towards a private section. Missy, I reply softly. She's the one T hat saved me from Brad. This is our most exclusive table, she says proudly as she closes a glass door behind us. I awe I look at the private dining room. 
The room consists of FLO or to ceiling windows and is completely secluded. Here, you can discuss whatever you want, and no one can hear a word. This place is gorgeous, Missy, I compliment her as the tension in my shoulders eases. This is not the hole I worked at. Thank you, she smiles. Take a seat. Where's Axel? Missy surprises me when she sits with us and winks a waitress over. With Adele, Luther replies proudly. Doing alpha stuff. Hopefully they can join you next time, Missy smiles as the waitress joins us. Missy, we need your help, Luther says straightforwardly after the waitress leaves with our order. I'm looking for a person that used to work here. After everything Axel and Liana did for me, I will give you my kidney, she chuckles. Wait, I frown. I haven't done anything for you. What are you talking about? This, Missy stretches her arms out towards the restaurant. Axel rewarded us after the Brad incident. We used that money to buy the restaurant. We. I ask. Me, Chloe and Bea, she smiles. This just became my favorite restaurant, I announce laughingly. My three heroes. They would love to see you, she says before she turns to Luther. So, who are you looking for? Unfortunately, we only have a name, Luther sighs. And she worked here decades ago, I add. Edith, Luther continues. She worked here around 1998. I wasn't even born then, Missy pulls a face. But T here were two Ediths here from 1997 till 2005. How do you know that? I laugh skeptically. She was a baby then and why would she bother memorizing old employee records? I practically grew up in this place, there is no more laughter in Missy's V.O.I.s. My mother was a waitress here. Daycare and babysitters were not always an option for single mothers. So, she brought me here. I was raised by the waitresses. I remember both Ediths. Do you know where they are? Luther asks hopefully. Even better, do you know if they had children? A daughter, specifically. This is making me uncomfortable, Missy turns to me. No offense. I know you're the Luna and all, but these are oddly specific questions. I understand, I nod. Unfortunately, this case is highly confidential and very sensitive. But I can assure you that not Edith or her daughter are in trouble. You don't have to answer my questions, Luther's voice is soothing as he fl ashes his most charming smile. If you could only help me to get into contact with both Ediths. I would be eternally grateful. Edith Chester, Missy replies after a moment. She has a daughter, Nicolette. We are the same age and were inseparable. We pretended to be sisters. But Edith got married when Nicolette was six and moved to Moonstone. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened to them. And the other Edith. I ask softly when it seems like Missy is done talking. The other Edith is my mother, Missy sighs and looks at me. She passed away when I was fifteen. I'm so sorry, I reach over and take her hand. Missy lowers her gaze and I look at Luther. How are we supposed to ask her personal questions when she is obviously still mourning her mother? Ugly questions like where is your father and was your mother an alcoholic? I appreciate your help, Missy. Thank you, I say softly, and decide that I am not pressuring her further. The waitress enters with our drinks before she can reply, and everybody remains quiet. Why are you looking for me? Missy asks when the waitress leaves. Or Nicolette. We don't have to talk about it now, I say as I steer my coffee. No. She says adamantly and looks at me. I want to know. Do you know who your father is? 
Luther asks and Missy's head just sorry, he shrugs. But that's why we're here. We're searching for a man's daughter. She nods and picks out the slice of lemon in her water. Gently she places it aside. No, she answers softly. I don't know who he is. My mother never wanted to talk about IT. Wait, she looks at me and Luther with renewed interest. Do you know who my fat her is? I don't K now, I answer honestly. We have little to work with. A married man had an affair with a woman, Edith, who used to work here. A girl was born in 1999, and the father paid Edith to disappear with the child. Then it's not me, Missy grins sourly. Because we were piss poor. Or Edith Chester for that matter. If they had money, they wouldn't have worked here and raised their daughters in the corner booth. Were either of the Ediths an alcoholic? Luther asks. No, Missy replies fiercely. They were good, hard-working, and honest people who did the best they could. I'm sorry, I say quickly. Luther didn't imply they weren't. He simply asked because the birth father mentioned it. Do you know what happened to Nicolette's father? No, she shakes her head and stands up. I was six last I saw her and her mother, and it's not a conversation Edith Chester would have with a child. I'm sorry, but you should talk to the man again because he's either lying or hiding something. Nicolette and I might have had a tough childhood, but we had good mothers. Not the drunken slut he's portraying. Missy. I try to stop her from walking away. I must go, we'll talk again later, she shouts over her shoulder as she walks away. My father could be lying to cover his ass, Luther grunts when the door shuts behind Missy. And that could be your sister, I look at him. I've seen her in action, Luther. She's fearless and strong. I will not be surprised if there's alpha blood running through her veins. If she's my sister, why did she grow up poor? Luther raises high s eyebrows. Either your dad didn't give the money or she refused it, I sigh. We'll have to fi and Nicolette. Maybe she knows more. Chapter 123 Adele POV It is silent in my office as I read through my diary and look at all the appointments Nikki made for me. I am going to be a busy person for the next couple of weeks. At least. Have Neil to cover training and security. Hello, pretty lady, Luther walks in and kisses Emmy on the cheek before he walks over to the cabinet to pour himself a drink. Did you find your beta? I did, I lean back in my chair and tell him about Neil. I'm glad it worked out, he sits down on the couch. I. Two, had an eventful day. I want details, I smile. I made myself a promise that I will never turn into one of those people who think their problems and duties are more important than their spouses. I may have found my sister, he announces and tells me everything. Your sister could be here, I say in awe. Right under our noses. Tomorrow. I am going to dig through the archives and search for every Chester, he announces. And Liana will do the same at Clear Moon. I'll help, I say eagerly. You can't, he grins. You and Axel have meeting S with Austin and Jack's old partners. Oh, yeah, I pull a face. Damn, I would much rather fi and his sister than sit through boring meetings. I used to do plenty of research and digging for Axel, and I love VED that part of my work. This sucks. A knock on the door interrupts us, and Nikki walks in. To my irritation, she glances at Luther before she looks at me. I still like the girl, but I am seriously considering moving her to a different position to get her away from Luther. It will drive me insane to witness her looking at my mate every time he is around. Alpha, you have a visitor, she announces. Alpha Philip is here. 
Briefly, I close my eyes and inhale deeply to scent re myself. Of all the people I have met, he would be the one visiting. Let him in, I sigh. So, what do you w want me to be? Luther smiles mischievously. A jealous mate that kicks him out or the silent but deadly mate brooding in the corner while you talk about whatever he's here to discuss. I love you, so I shall set you free, I say theatrically as I stand up and walk towards him. There's no need for both of us to suffer through this. Go, and enjoy freedom. I don't mind staying, Luther pulls me into his embrace. I know, I kiss him longingly. But I chose this, and you didn't. Call me if you need me, he kisses me quickly. I will, I smile as I watch him leave. Nervously, I straighten my clothes and sit behind my desk. I know I can stand my ground, but if Philip wants to talk business, I might get the short end of the stick. I know I am green when it comes to business and so does Philip. Alpha Adele, Philip strides into the office and I must blink to ensure myself I am not dreaming. This Philip is vastly different from the Philip I met at the party. He looks comfortable and relaxed and not nearly as stuck up as he did in a suit. For the first time, I notice the fine lines at the corners of his eyes indicating that he laughs easily and often. This is unexpected, I smile politely. Can I offer you anything to drink? I'll have what you're having, he grins as he takes a seat. I walk over to the cabinet and pour each of us a whiskey. He smiles charmingly when I hand him his gla asterisk s, and I take a seat opposite him. I know you re-wondering why I'm here, he says before I can talk. I'm here to apologize. I'm afraid the situation got away from me, and well, you know what was said. I appreciate it, I nod. I'm not the bad GUI, Adele, he leans forward and rests his elbows on his knees. I know I acted like a jerk, but try to see it from my point of view. I was introducing myself one moment, the next I was surrounded by hostile males. I understand, I say cautiously. But Axel is my mentor and former Alpha. I trust him. And Luther is my mate. They we rent tea hostile, they were protective. And Axel and I don't like each other, he says sourly as he leans back. Have you asked him why he doesn't like him? No, I admit. It's none of my business. I blame him for my sister's death, he looks me dead in the eyes. All his friendliness has evaporated, and he isens again the man I met at the party. Greta was your sister. I gape. Angela killed her, not Axel. Why are you blaming him? Because he couldn't resist anything I in a skirt, he grunts. If he didn't screw up Angela, she would have killed my sister. Angela wouldn't have touched Greta if it weren't for Axel. You suck at apologies, I snort. Which brings me to the second reason for my visit, he replies. A warning. You better stop talking, I warn him sternly. I will not tolerate you badmouthing or threatening Axel or my mate. And unless you're a virgin or haven't had ex-relations with anyone other than your mate, you should shut up. It could have easily happened to you. The people you should blame for Greta's death are already six feet under. And you have Axel to thank for it. Thank him, he snorts. I'm furious for what he did. I wanted to kill them, but first I wanted to destroy them. I wanted them to see their empire crumble before I killed them, but Axel ruined that for me as well. I think you should leave, I put my glass down and stand up. Or kill me because I give you my word that I will repeat this conversation word for word to Axel. Not that it should be a surprise to you, you know where my loyalty lies. Tell him, he shrugs. I don't care. I merely told you why I cannot stand him. I didn't threaten him or his pack. 
But you, young Alpha, you should reconsider everything you believe. Your mentor isn't as great and flawless as you would like to believe. Everybody has flaws, fill up roll my eyes. I'm not blind or stupid. Axel was young when this happened, but he grew up and turned into a great man and Alpha. All you managed with this visit, is to confi RM that I will never do business with you. I'm not interested in your business, he smiles and stands up. I'm interested in you, his eyes smolder into mine as he glides a finger down my cheek don't touch me, I hiss and slap his hand away he throws his he ad back and laughs loudly pretty Adele, he chuckles. Innocent, but fierce. You and I will work well together. Are you deaf or stupid? I sneer. I'm never working with you. I am closing my borders for you. You're officially no longer welcome. Keep telling yourself that, he smiles devilishly. I liked Axel when he dated my sister. Right up to the part where I was standing next to Greta's grave. I was a teenage boy when I learned that people aren't what they seem. But your eyes will open soon enough and then you'll see Axel the way I see him. Get out, I point towards the door. This meeting has no purpose. Tell Axel to look deeper into my contract with Jack, Philip grins as he walks towards the door. Then he'll see that I'm the reason Jack was going bankrupt. He's next, and there's nothing he can do about it. I am trembling with anger as I sit down when the door closes behind Philip. None of this makes sense to me. Why would Philip come to me and spill his guts? Why would he warn Axel that he is coming for him? There must be a reason. People keep their secrets and evil agendas to themselves. They do not reveal their plans to the opponent. Philip's parting words rumble through my mind and the realization strikes me like lightning. I am just the messenger. A means to an ND. He wants me to tell Axel. He wants Axel to know. His biggest thrill would be Axel knowing he is coming for him, but he does not know when or how. I reach for my car keys but stop. I want to see Axel and tell him everything but then I will do exactly what Philip wants me to. But what kind of friend would I be if I did not warn Axel? Worse, what if something happened to Axel and I did nothing to prevent it? What am I supposed to do? Chapter 124 Adele POV Philip's words disturbed me more than I would like to admit. Not to mention that I feel dirty and violated just because he touched my cheek. But I cannot sit here and do nothing. Luther. I jump up and march towards the door. Luther, I call as I run up the stairs. Damn it, this would have been so much easier if I could mind link him. But Nuuu, I wanted the romance and the FL hours. Right now, I understand Luther's reluctance to join an Alpha family better. He and I are the same. We enjoy romantic things, and when you are running a pack, there simply is no time for such frivolous things. If we marked each other that night at Axel and Liana's wedding, I would have found him by now. Luther. Where's the fiery? Luther rushes out of the bathroom, still zipping up his pants. We need to talk, I grab him by the arm and drag him into our room. I've never been the girl guys hit on, I say as I close the door and start pacing the room. But I'm aware enough to know when a guy is making a move. What are you talking about? Luther frowns as he crosses his arms in front of his chest. Philip, I grunt. He touched my cheek and D told me he's interested in me. Luther hisses as his eyes turn black. I'm going to kill him. Yes. I say eagerly and stop my pacing. That would be the solution to everything and I would feel much better witnessing the life drains from his eyes. Let's do that, I walk to the door. Let's go kill him. Easy there, tiger, Luther grabs my wrist and holds me back. 
we might be wolves, but we're not lawless. Then mark me, I throw my arms around his neck and start kissing him. Mark me so that he can keep his distance. Adele, Luther says patiently as he removes my hands from his neck and looks me in the eyes. He knows I'm your mate, and he doesn't care. Do you honestly think a mark will stop him? Stop being right, I grunt and go sit on the bed. I close my eyes and exhale deeply. Sorry, I mumble after a while. It was just an awful encounter, and I couldn't mind link you. For a moment, I felt vulnerable and frustrated. Look at me, Luther kneels in front of me and takes my hands. If you want me to mark you, I will happily do it. But what about your dream of it being romantic? I was a foolish girl with a foolish dream, I pull a face. Just because my parents had it, doesn't mean I get to have it. But you can, he gently strokes my cheek. This is the one thing you can control. Do you really want to abandon that dream? No, I shake my head. But I must grow up and face reality. I can't always get what I want. What we want, he smiles. I love you, I kiss him and stand up. And I appreciate you, but I must go to Clear Moon. I won't be back in time for dinner. More Philip stuff? Luther asks. More Philip stuff, I admit with a sigh. How about we get married on Saturday? Luther's words bring me to a halt, and I turn around. That's less than a week, I frown. So? He shrugs. You and I have talked about everything. It simply needs to happen. As much as I would love it, I walk to him and put my arms around his neck. I don't have time to plan odding. But I do, he grins wickedly as his arms go around my waist. You do your alpha stuff and I'll plan our wedding. All you have to do is get your dress and show up. You're serious, I look at him in awe. Very much. He kisses me quickly. I would love that I laugh heartedly. Then it's settled, he hugs me tightly. We're getting married this weekend. We're getting married, I say happily before I kiss him tenderly. Liana POV Adele, what are you doing here? I ask surprised when an Omega escorts her into the dining room. Connor reaches for my hand with the spoonful of pumpkin and pulls it closer to his mouth. Is everything all right? Axel immediately stands up. We're getting married on Saturday. Adele blurts out. That's wonderful, I smile. And fast, Axel frowns. Are you pregnant? Axel. I gasp but Adele starts laughing. No, I'm not, she chuckles. But I do need your help, Liana. Of course, I hand Connor's spoon to Axel. Your turn. Let's go to the office, I stand up. Thanks, Adele's smile is not as relaxed as I would expect from a blushing bride, and I frown. Not everything is as rosy as she makes it out to be. What's wrong? I ask as I shut the door behind us. Do you have reservations about the wedding? I have no doubts about Luther or the wedding, she replies as she sits down. But I had a visitor. I'm listening, I say softly and sit opposite her. Quietly, I listen to her story, and my frown grows deeper the more she talks. You're right, I rhythmically tap with my fingers on my knee. Philip is up to something. It makes no sense. I think he wants to taunt Axel. Adele sighs. Maybe, I stare absent-mindedly at the vase with fresh roses as my mind works over time. Unless. I think it's a ruse. Which part? Adele frowns. All of it, I mumble. Philip's lying about Greta. His version of taking revenge on Jack and Angela is a lie. 
Nobody knew Angela killed her until the day she attacked Axel. Which was the same day Axel cancelled his contract. And Jack's business was already in trouble by then. At that point, Philip had no idea what Angela did, and he had no ill feelings towards them. And if he had, it wasn't because of Greta. Destroying Jack's business to get back at them, is bullshit. Besides, all of that happened more than a year ago. He's using Greta's death as an excuse or a smokescreen. So, he hates Axel for a different reason, Adele grunts. Not necessarily, I shake my head. I think that's the only truth in his story. Holding Axel responsible for her death is plausible. She was under his care and on his premises. But nothing he said about Jack and Angela is the truth. There's something else going on there. And I was dumb enough to fall for his lies, Adele smirks sourly. Not at all, I shake my head. In fact, if you told Axel the story, he would have believed it. Philip's explanation makes sense until you consider the timeline. For a long time, Axel felt responsible for Greta's death. He would V.E. questioned Philip's story because in a way, he agrees. Why would Philip fabricate such a story? Adele frowns. And why does he want Axel to know that he's coming for Hyam? That's easy, I smile, and Adele looks confused at me. It's a diversion. Philip wants Axel to be occupied while he executes his true plan. What were Philip's last words to you about the contracts? Axel should look deeper into his contract with Jack, Adele recalls. Then he'll see the reason Jack was going bankrupt. Philip wants Axel to dig deeper into the business, I lean back and intertwine my fingers. He will be elbow deep in contracts searching for answers, and two things will happen. One, it will postpone all new business for you and Axel. And two, Axel will be so busy searching that he won't notice Philip's true agenda. I wish we had an insider in Philip's pack, Adele grinds her teeth. Somebody that could give us more information. No need, I shrug. We'll just give him enough rope to hang himself. Axel is a patient man, Adele. He had Jack on a leash for months before he revealed his cards. This time will not be any different. We're going to tell Axel everything Philip said. Axel will behave exactly as Philip expects and he will relax because he thinks his plan is working. Giving him false confidence, Adele smiles. Exactly, I grin and stand up. You should go home and plan your wedding. I'll take it from here. Speak in G of my wedding. Adele clears her throat as she gets up. Would you please be my bridesmaid? Are you sure? I look meaningfully at my baby B-ump. You're my only true friend, Adele looks pleadingly at me. I don't want anybody else. It'll be an honor, I smile. Thank you, she shrieks and pulls me into a bear hug. Are you going to make me wear pink? I smile wickedly as I remember how much she despised her bridesmaid dress. Chapter 125 Luther POV I reach over for Adele, but her side of the bed is empty. Just the messy linen and the dent in her pillow are evidence that she slept next to me. For a second, I want to worry but then I remember. She got up earlier for all her meetings with Axel and the business partners. I yawn and stretch out lazily before I throw my legs off the bed and get up. What have I gotten myself into? I do not know the first thing about planning a wedding. Sure, Adele and I discussed what we like and want, but actually doing it. I rush through the shower and de go downstairs for breakfast. My mother would have loved to help with this, but I am not even ready to invite them. Let alone asking her for help. I just hope Liana will help when I ask her. After what Adele told me last night about Philip, Liana and Axel will have their hands full. 
Adele and I do not have to wait, I know that. But it is our fantasy and our dream. The world is soiled with sadness, grief, greediness, and all kinds of evil. People must make time and space for beauty and happiness. I do not care that people think we are ridiculous for waiting. This is for me and Adele. Good morning, Luther, Nikki greets as she walks in. Morning, I greet absent-mindedly as L add honey to my pancakes. This girl makes me uncomfortable. She is kind and sweet and I get why Adele likes her, I just cannot stand the way she looks at me. It feels like she is waiting for me to say something, or that she wants to say something but does not. Alpha Adele will be out all day, she says softly. She didn't leave me any instructions. Is there anything I can do for you? I am about to be rush her off when an idea hits me. If I keep her busy enough, she will have less time to stare at me. Now that I think of it, yes, I smile. Me et me in Adele's office in an hour. Okay, she smiles brightly and leaves. I finish my breakfast and go to our room to find the folder Adele and I had put together. It will be great if Nikki helps with the scut work. If Liana will only help me with the final touches, I can make this work. Thanks for helping, I smile at Nikki as I enter the office. Just doing my job, she says chirpily. Adele and I are getting married on Saturday, I look at her. And I need your help getting everything ready. Really? Her eyes start sparkling and D her face lightens up. Yes, I clear my throat and look down at the Phi Le in my hands. At least I know she is not in love with me. If she was, my wedding would not have excited her. You can start with the electronic invitations, and, why are you looking at me like that? Who are the bridesmaids? She asks eagerly. Liana, I frown slightly. I did not realize the entourage was so important. Oh, her face falls. Nobody else. No, just Liana, I say firmly. Can we continue now? Yeah, sure, sorry, she nods eagerly but the momentary sadness in her eyes does not go by me. This girl is truly weird. Okay, here's the guest list, I hand it over to her. Please send the invitations immediately. It's already a short notification as it is. It will be done, she takes the list. Thank you, I smile. I'll be back later. I do not look at her as I walk away to call Liana. Liana POV hi, I smile as I answer the phone. Need help with the wedding arrangements? How do you know? Luther asks. Please, I snort and lean back into my office chair. It's a wedding. I've done it before. It's work, Luther. Well, would you help, please? Luther sounds like a lost little boy. Yes, I'll help, I laugh softly. What have you done so far? The invitations, he mumbles. Oh, man. I burst out laughing. You haven't done anything. I'll be there in a couple of hours. Thank you, thank you, he sighs. I don't know what I was thinking when I convinced Adele I could do this. You did it out of love, I smile. You did a nice thing, Luther. Together we'll make this happen. Thanks, Liana, he sounds relieved. See you soon. My smile fades when I disconnect the call. The news I have for him cannot be shared over the phone. Luther is already waiting for me at the door when I arrive. He looks like a rubber ball ready to bounce all over the place. Thank goddess you're here, he blurts out when he opens the door for me. Nikki is driving me insane with her weirdness. Define weirdness, I grin as I get out and walk with him towards the house. She has all these questions and opinions about the wedding as if she is part of it, he frowns. 
who's the bride's maids? Chicken is better than phi sh. Black isn't a color for a wedding. On and on. Come on, Luther, I pat his shoulder. Most girls grow up fantasizing about their own wedding. Now, she has an opportunity to be part of the Alpha's wedding. Of course, she will do her best to leave her fingerprint. She's an Omega, and she gets to tell her friends she's close to the Alpha. Yeah, well, we'll revisit this conversation after you spend time with her, Luther snorts. Something else, I take a deep breath and stop walking. I had time to investigate Missy. All the records I found back up her story. I also learned something she doesn't know. Missy has a huge trust fund. Two million huge excluding interest from the last two decades. That doesn't make sense, Luther shakes his head. How can Missy not know about the money? And what kind of mother would make her child suffer financially when she doesn't have to? We've been listening to your father's version and Missy's version, I explain. But not the mother's version. If it were me, I wouldn't have touched that money. It would make me uncomfortable like I sold out. It would make me feel dirty. It could be the same for the mother. I don't know much about Missy, but she is proud and hardworking. And I can only guess those traits were installed by her mother. They might have been poor, but they do have pride. That slutty, drunk mistress your father portrayed, is false. If she's my sister, Luther raises his eyebrows. It could be Nicolette. Who we haven't found yet, I point out the obvious. But we can save a lot of time if we ask Missy to do a DNA test. If she's your sister, we can stop looking for Nicolette. My money is on Missy, Luther. So, I'll ask her for a DNA test, Luther shrugs nonchalantly. Missy is so going to kick your ass if you walk up to her and ask for the test, I snort and start walking. But you just said, I know, I cut him off. But we'll have to do it delicately. You saw how she reacted when we talked to her. Missy wants to know who her father is. Can you imagine how hurt she's going to be when she learns her father paid her mother to keep her away from him? We can ask her to do it, but she has the right to refuse. Ignorance is bliss, Luther. It might be better for her to keep whatever fantasy she concocted about her father alive than to learn the truth. You're right, he sighs. I forgot this is not all about me and my feelings. Luther opens the office door for me, and I walk inside. Nikki looks up but her smile freezes when she sees me. Hi, I say politely. You must be Nikki. Nice to meet you, Luna, she stands up. Show me what you've do any so far, I say friendly and taking a seat. Um, that's Alpha Adele's chair, she says cautiously and glances at Luther. Is she here? I raise my eyebrows. N, no, her cheeks turn red, and she looks down. Then I guess she wouldn't mind, I smile stiffly, and Luther gives me an I told you so look. Intensely I look at Nikki and the way she moves as she gathers the papers she has been working on. How she bites her tongue and hides her emotions. But mostly, I notice how she looks at Luther. Not with love or LT. But with hope and adoration. Nikki, I lean back in the chair and intertwine my fingers. Is your name by any chance Nicolette? Her head jerks up and she looks at me with big eyes. Yes, her voice is barely audible. How did you know? Chapter 126 Adele POV the room is packed with every person who ever did business with Jack. I recognize most of the people from my inauguration. As captivating as Axel's speech is, I do not hear a word. All I am aware of is Philip's eyes burning into me. I know if I turn my head to the left for only an inch, I will look him dead in the eyes. 
so, I am looking everywhere but left. Because I will get up and slap that smug grin off his face. Just because I can. I hate that Philip thinks he has the upper hand. I hate that he came to me and intimidated me. I hate that I am new at this and second-guessing everything I thought I knew. I was confident and ready for this position until he came and ruined it. To make matters worse, he is my first obstacle. It makes me wonder if I will ever be a competent alpha. People clapping hands pull me back to reality and I watch Austin standing up and addressing the crowd. Real axe, Axel whispers as he sits down next to me. You're doing fine. If only I could believe you, I mumble. Axel sighs heavily as he turns his attention to Austin. I need to do better, I decide. I want to be better. I can do this, and I want to do this. I just have to suck it up and try harder. Austin finishes his speech, and everybody gets up to take a break alphas, Philip smiles as he approaches us. I'm surprised that you are going ahead with the contracts. Especially after my advice. I must thank you, Axel rests his hand on Philip's shoulder. I took the advice to heart, and I promise, we won't be doing any business with you. That's what you think, Philip brushes Axel's hand off. But I'm not stupid enough to reveal all my cards. I already did you a favor too many. I'll be sure to return one Axel smiles, but his eyes are throwing daggers. How are you doing, beautiful? Philip ignored Axel, and his eyes glided over my body. You can call me Alpha, I plaster a smile on my face to hide my disgust. Would you like to join me for coffee, he leans towards me. Never, I snap. Swimming with piranhas sounds more pleasant. Adele, he reaches for me, and I slap his hand away. For a moment he looks fl abergast but then he laughs softly. I'm a persistent man, and I know what I want. Getting to know you better, is going to be so much fun. There's a difference between persistent and stupid, smile sweetly. And you're being stupid. I do not wait for his reply, turn around and walk away. I cannot believe he said that in public. Walk with me, Axel says softly behind me, and I follow him to an empty office. Are you okay, he closes the door behind us. No, I explode. He has no sense of boundaries and makes me feel like a joke. H he's not taking me seriously as an alpha. I'm just a toy for him. Forsake, he even told me his diabolical plan. That just proves he thinks I'm going to fail, and honestly, right now I think he might be right. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself, Axel inhale s deeply. Every alpha I know has gone through the emotions you're experiencing. Even you? I raise my eyebrows and cross my arms in front of my chest. Even me, he smiles. Taking over from my father and not firing up weighed heavily on my shoulders. My dad shadowed me for two years until he trusted me enough to do it on my own. Thanks, I nod. I'll try harder. Good, he smiles. While I have you here. I had two forensic accountants investigate Jack's business deals, and something is indeed wrong. The look on Axel's face makes my stomach dive. He looks worried, and if he is worried, I must be terrified. Do you think Philip was telling the truth? I frown. Partially, yes, he sighs and sits down. But I won't know exactly what's going on until I'm allowed to look at Jake's estate. I don't understand, I say confused and sit opposite him. We took over the pack we have access to everything. Every pack needs a source of income. Axel explains. Silverman Enterprises is a trust and, in a sense, belongs to the pack. The Alpha only runs it and receives an income. 
we are allowed to generate additional income if it doesn't interfere with the Pax company. Same with Moonstone. This company doesn't belong to you or me. We're only running it on behalf of the Pack. Jack's private bank account and assets are something else. Those documents are with the attorneys. I'm calling in every favor and pulling every string to get hold of it. But his private business isn't supposed to interfere with the pack, I state. You're right, he nods. The accountants are still trying to figure out how and what Jack did. Did Jack steal from the pack? I frown. The opposite, Axel sighs. It looks like he made the pack richer than it is. You'll have to dumb it down, Axel, I grunt frustrated. I don't understand. Moonstone provides software, he explains. But it's outdated, and Jack didn't bother keeping up with technology. I'm not the only one that took my business elsewhere. The company is supposed to lose money and should have been bankrupt by now, but it's not. The accountants compared the contracts with the income. Moonstone's bank account still shows income from us, and we haven't paid a cent. The same with others who cancelled their contracts. Moonstone's books show a lucrative picture, as well as the bank account. But it shouldn't be cause of the cancelled contracts. So, Jack hid the pack's true source of income. I ask confused. You're catching up quickly, Axel smiles. I think Jack generated money illegally. Okay, I nod slowly as I try to piece everything together. According to the PAC and the IRS, Moonstone generates income from selling software. The IRS doesn't inspect the contracts and has no idea which are expired or active. And as long as Jack paid his dues to the IRS, they didn't look further into it. But why? Why would Jack enrich the pack and not himself? You can bet he enriched himself, Axel snorts. Whatever business he was involved in, was so lucrative that he could keep Moonstone AFLO'd and stuff his own pockets. So, he paid Moonstone on behalf of Silverman Enterprises and other cancelled contracts to keep the books clean, I state. That's what I'm thinking, Axel nods. No Alpha can afford for his or her pack to go bankrupt. That's the quickest way to be exiled and replaced. Jack didn't keep Moonstone's finances healthy for any other reason other than he didn't want to lose his position and status. But here's where it gets interesting. Philip received money from Moonstone. There's a document where Philip claims compensation for damages and loss of income due to a software malfunction. Philip was involved with whatever Jack was doing, and it was the only legal way for him to collect. If Jack paid it to him directly from his account, there would have been questions or investigations. Why would Philip tip you off about this? I frown. He must have known you'd figure it out. Because his payments are crippling Moonstone Axel size. He knew I would figure out eventually what Jack was doing. He also knows that I will not figure out in time exactly where Jack got the money from. With the lack of income and his repayments, Moonstone will go under. He's gloating, Adele. Moonstone is in trouble. My eyes widen as I realize the true meaning of his words. Without new contracts or additional income, Moonstone will go bankrupt. The repayments to Philip are documented between Moonstone and him. Even with Jack dead, Moonstone is legally bound to keep up with the repayments. Exactly, Axel nods. And we have about four months to fi x this. Oh I mumble as cold, dark tendrils curl around my heart. Hundreds of people will suffer if we cannot fi x this. What are we going to do? We must figure out where Jack and Philip got the money from, and expose them. Axel replies. And fight like to get old contracts back. Okay, I sigh. I know it sounds easier than it would be. Just one more thing, I look at Axel. 
Why is he flirting with me if he intends to ruin my pack? He hopes to charm you into joining him and continue with the illegal activities, Axel replies sourly. You'll be the ultimate prize since I picked you. Good luck with that, I grunt furiously. I'm nobody's finding toy. Come on, I stand up and march towards the door. We need more clients. Chapter 127 The room is packed with every person who ever did business with Jack. I recognize most of the people from my inauguration. As captivating as Axel's speech is, I do not hear a word. All I am aware of is Philip's eyes burning into me. I know if I turn my head to the left for only an inch, I will look him dead in the eyes. So. I am looking everywhere but left because I will get up and slap that smug grin off his face. Just because I can. I hate that Philip thinks he has the upper hand. I hate that he came to me and intimidated me. I hate that I am new at this and second-guessing everything I thought I knew. I was content and ready for this position until he came and ruined it. To make matters worse, he is my first obstacle. It makes me wonder if I will ever be a competent alpha. People clapping hands pull me back to reality and I watch Austin standing up and addressing the crowd. Relax, Axel whispers as he sits down next to me. You're doing any. If only I could believe you, I mumble. Axel sighs heavily as he turns his attention to Austin. I need to do better, I decide. I want to be better. I can do this, and I want to do this. I just have to suck it up and try harder. Austin pnishes his speech, and everybody gets up to take a break. Alphas, Philip smiles as he approaches us. I'm surprised that you are going ahead with the contracts. Especially after my advice. I must thank you, Axel rests his hand on Philip's shoulder. I took the advice to heart and I promise, we won't be doing any business with you. That's what you think, Philip brushes Axel's hand off. But I'm not stupid enough to reveal all my cards. I already did you a favor too many. I'll be sure to return one Axel smiles, but his eyes are throwing daggers. How are you doing, beautiful? Philip ignores Axel and his eyes glide over my body. You can call me Alpha, I plaster a smile on my face to hide my disgust. Would you like to join me for coffee, he leans towards me. Never, I snap. Swimming with piranhas sounds more pleasant. Adele, he reaches for me, and I slap his hand away. For a moment he looks abergast but then he laughs softly. I'm a persistent man, and I know what I want. Getting to know you better, is going to be so much fun. There's a difference between persistent and stupid, I smile sweetly. And you're being stupid. I do not wait for his reply, turn around and walk away. I cannot believe he said that in public. Walk with me, Axel says softly behind me, and I follow him to an empty office. Are you okay, he closes the door behind us. No, explode. He has no sense of boundaries and makes me feel like a joke. He's not taking me seriously as an alpha. I'm just a toy for him. Forsake, he even told me his diabolical plan. That just proves he thinks I'm going to fail, and honestly, right now I think he might be right. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself, Axel inhales deeply. Every alpha I know has gone through the emotions you're experiencing. Even you. I raise my eyebrows and cross my arms in front of my chest. Even me, he smiles. Taking over from my father and not raking up weight heavily on my shoulders. My dad shadowed me for two years until he trusted me enough to do it on my own. Thanks, I nod. I'll try harder. Good he smiles. While I have you here. 
I had two forensic accountants investigate Jack's business deals, and something is indeed wrong. The look on Axel's face makes my stomach dive. He looks worried, and if he is worried, I must be torrid. Do you think Philip was telling the truth? I frown. Partially, yes, he sighs and sits down. But I won't know exactly what's going on until I'm allowed to look at Jake's estate. I don't understand, I say confused and sit opposite him. We took over the pack, we have access to everything. Every pack needs a source of income, Axel explains. Silverman Enterprises is a trust and, in a sense, belongs to the pack. The Alpha only runs it and receives an income. We are allowed to generate additional income if it doesn't interfere with the pack's company. Same with Moonstone. This company doesn't belong to you or me. We're only running it on behalf of the pack. Jack's private bank account and assets are something else. Those documents are with the attorneys. I'm calling in every favor and pulling every string to get hold of it. But his private business isn't supposed to interfere with the pack, I state. You're right, he nods. The accountants are still trying to gur out how and what Jack did. Did Jack steal from the pack? I frown. The opposite, Axel sighs. It looks like he made the pack richer than it is. You'll have to dumb it down, Axel, I grunt frustrated. I don't understand Moonstone provides software, he explains. But it's outdated, and Jack didn't bother keeping up with technology. I'm not the only one that took my business elsewhere. The company is supposed to lose money and should have been bankrupt by now, but it's not. The accountants compared the contracts with the income. Moonstone's bank account still shows income from us, and we haven't paid a cent. The same is true of others who cancelled their contracts. Moonstone's books show a lucrative picture, as well as the bank account but it shouldn't because of the cancelled contracts. So, Jack hid the pack's true source of income. I ask confused. You're catching up quickly, Axel smiles. I think Jack generated money illegally. Okay, I nod slowly as I try to piece everything together. According to the pack and the IRS, Moonstone generates income from selling software. The IRS doesn't inspect the contracts and has no idea which are expired or active. And as long as Jack paid his dues to the IRS, they didn't look further into it. But why? Why would Jack enrich the pack and not himself? You can bet he enriched himself, Axel snorts. Whatever business he was involved in, was so lucrative that he could keep Moonstone out and stuff his own pockets. So. He paid Moonstone on behalf of Silverman Enterprises and other cancelled contracts to keep the books clean, I state. That's what I'm thinking, Axel nods. No Alpha can afford for his or her pack to go bankrupt. That's the quickest way to be exiled and replaced. Jack didn't keep Moonstone's Nances healthy for any other reason other than he didn't want to lose his position and status. But here's where it gets interesting. Philip received money from Moonstone. There's a document where Philip claims compensation for damages and loss of income due to a software malfunction. Philip was involved with whatever Jack was doing, and it was the only legal way for him to collect. If Jack paid it to him directly from his account, there would have been questions or investigations. Why would Philip tip you off about this? I frown. He must have known you'd gur it out. Because his payments are crippling Moonstone, Axel sighs. He knew I would gur out eventually what Jack was doing. He also knows that I will not gur out in time exactly where Jack got the money from. With the lack of income and his repayments, Moonstone will go under. He's gloating, Adele Moonstone is in trouble. My eyes widened as I realized the true meaning of his words. Without new contracts or additional income, 
Moonstone will go bankrupt. The repayments to Philip are documented between Moonstone and him. Even with Jack dead, Moonstone is legally bound to keep up with the repayments. Exactly, Axel nods. And we have about four months to X this. Oh I mumble as cold, dark tendrils curl around my heart. Hundreds of people will suffer if we cannot X this. What are we going to do? We must go out where Jack and Philip got the money from, and expose them, Axel replies. And fight like to get old contracts back. Okay, I sigh. I know it sounds easier than it would be. Just one more thing, I look at Axel. Why is he irting with me if he intends to ruin my pack? He hopes to charm you into joining him and continue with the illegal activities, Axel replies sourly. You'll be the ultimate prize since I picked you. Good luck with that, I grunt furiously. I'm nobody's noting toy. Come on, I stand up and march towards the door. We need more clients. Chapter 128 My jaw hits the floor as I look from Nikki to Liana. I feel like an idiot. Why did I not make the connection? It is so obvious Nikki, Nicolette. Not to mention Nikki's behavior towards me. I know Missy, Liana smiles stiffly. She told me about her friend who moved here haven't spoken to her in years, Nikki replies and looks disappointed. I'm surprised she remembered me. Nikki, would you be a dear and make me a cup of tea? Liana asks sweetly. Sure, she nods and turns to me. Anything for you, Luther? No, thank you, I clear my throat, and avoid eye contact as she leaves. That's my sister, I point towards the door she disappeared through. She, not so fast, Luther, Liana cuts me off. She might be your sister. Don't forget about Missy. Come on, I go sit opposite Liana. You saw the way she looks at me. She's my sister and she knows it. Luther, Liana sighs and sits back. Your need to end your sister was born out of guilt for what your father did. But have you ever thought what you're going to do with her once you found her? For starters, I'm going to apologize for my dad's behavior, I snort. I need to know she's doing any. That my father didn't ruin her life. Missy is a strong and successful business owner, Liana points out. And Nikki is a sweet girl. But what kind of relationship do you want with her? Do you even want a relationship with her? Because if you don't want her to be a part of your life, you shouldn't say a word. It would be more rejection for her if you envy her but don't want anything to do with her. I look past Liana at the wall behind her as I overthink her words. My life is damn near perfect as it is. Pursuing this sister thing could complicate things. Yes, I answer after a moment of serious consideration. I want to know her, and I want her to be part of my life. My dad made a mistake, and he made it worse when he denied the child. I will be no better than him if I do the same. I know I can't make up for the lost years, but it would be nice to have a sister in my future. Okay, Liana smiles. But I do think you should talk to Nikki's mother before you tell her. It will devastate Nicolette if we make a mistake. If her mother doesn't want to talk to us, we should ask for DNA tests, I suggest. Just keep in mind you can't force them, Liana says sternly. They're young adults and might not want to be found. I know, but I doubt that's the case, I smirk. You said it yourself, Missy got excited when she thought we knew her father, and you saw Nikki. I think she knew before me who she is. But we don't know what her mother told her, Liana reasons. She could have grown up with a fairy tale, and the truth could, Nikki walks in, and Liana abruptly goes quiet. It was love at RST site, 
Nikki says as she places the tea in front of Liana. One LOK at Liana, and she gives me a meaningful look with big eyes. Have you been eavesdropping? Liana asks sternly. Not really, Nikki blushes slightly and averts her eyes. The door is open, and I heard my and Missy's names and put two and two together. You're speculating if Missy and I have the same father, Nikki says softly and intertwines her engers. The answer is no. That thought never crossed my mind, I chuckle awkwardly. The idea of two sisters, only months apart, from two women with the same name, is just too weird. Tell us about your parents, Nikki, Liana invites. My mother was a waitress, Nikki smiles softly as she sits down. One day, a handsome man came to her restaurant. It was love at RST site, but they weren't mates, and he was married. But their love was stronger than the facts. He was going to leave his wife when my mother told him she was pregnant. I do not say a word, and Liana reaches into her handbag to take out a tissue. Nikki smiles weakly as she accepts it and wipes her face. Mother told me he died in a motorcycle accident before he could leave his wife, she continues. We never really talked about it, but that was her answer whenever I asked him about him. She met her mate when I was V.E. She married him a year later and we moved here. Things got better after that. Sam earned enough for her to be a stay-at-home mom, and he loved both of us. I was about 15 when overheard a conversation between mom and Sam. I couldn't hear everything, but I could hear enough to learn the truth. Luther, Nikki looks at me. You're my brother. I look into her brown eyes and suddenly I turn numb and dumb. I do not know what to say or do. Should I hug her and welcome her to the family? I never account for how awkward this could be. Will you agree to a DNA test? Liana saves me. Sure, Nikki shrugs. But why? Because you were 15 when you overheard a conversation, Liana smiles kindly. We need to be sure before we take this further. There is a lot at stake here, not just for Luther and his family, but also for your mother and Sam. There's a reason why she kept the truth from you. I would also like to talk to your mother, I add. This does concern her as well. I understand, Nikki smiles through her tears. I'm just so happy you know now. It was killing me being so close to you and not saying anything. We'll gur this out, I smile stiff why as I reach over and pat her hand awkwardly. But RST we have a wedding to plan, Liana changes the subject and I can kiss her at that moment. Nikki, I know this is an emotional roller coaster, but are you okay to pick up the cake samples I ordered this morning? Denightly, she smiles brightly at Liana before looking at me. Anything for my big brother? Thanks, I shift uncomfortably in my chair. Liana POV I lean back into the chair as I watch Nikki leave. I cannot put my anger on it but something is not right here. Edith Chester's story makes me uncomfortable. And Nikki blindly believes her. She did not even think to question her mother. If my mother RST told me my father was dead and then changed it, I would be furious and hurt. Just say it, Luther sighs. I made a mistake looking for my sister. That's not what I'm thinking, laugh softly. But now that you mention it, you don't seem overjoyed and relieved. I'm awkward and uncomfortable, he confesses. I don't know what to do with her. She's so emotional and attached or something. She's excited, Luther, I roll my eyes. This is what she wanted since she overheard her father is alive. You're angry at your family and expected that she would be too. Yeah. He exhales deeply and stares at the ceiling for a moment before looking at me again. I found my sister. Maybe, I say RMLY. We can't be sure until we have the test results. 
You heard her story, Luther leans forward and rests his elbows on the desk. All the pieces T. What about the money? I raise my eyebrows. I know Missy has money, but we don't know about Nikki. Missy doesn't know about it, it could be the same for Nikki, he shrugs. Missy's mother had a stroke and died suddenly, I inform him. In her will, Edith Chester was named Missy's legal guardian. The will also stipulated that Missy isn't allowed to know about the money before she's 30 or NDS her mate whichever comes RST. There is also a sealed letter for Missy. I can only assume it explains why Edith did the things she did. My question is why did Missy stay at Clear Moon? She was a minor and was legally supposed to live with Edith Chester and Nikki. Why didn't that happen? Valid questions but what does that have to do with ending my sister? Luther frowns. Maybe nothing, maybe everything, I shrug. I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me. Will you neglect such a responsibility? Will you leave Connor to fend for himself if you're his guardian? Of course not, Luther huffs indignantly. Exactly, I nod. I don't trust Edith Chester, and I think she lied to Nikki. You don't think Nikki's my sister, Luther mumbles. No, I don't, I sigh. I do think Nikki believes wholeheartedly you're her brother. I also think Edith Chester isn't a very nice person. Chapter 129 I am optimistic as Liana and I drive to Edith Chester's house. Finding my sister means I can try and X what dad has broken, and I can get rid of this guilt. I will finally feel that I deserve to be part of the Alpha family again, and worthy of the pack. Cute place, Liana murmurs when I park the car. I always had a thing for white picket fences and red roses. It T.S. Nikki, I grin. It's all fairy tale and chirpiness like her. I couldn't agree more Liana laughs as we walk towards the front door. I knock, and quietly, we wait for someone to open. May I help you? A woman with platinum blonde hair answers the door. Edith Chester. I ask. Yes, she clears her throat. Or I used to be. Good day, were, Luna Liana, the woman interrupts me, and her eyes widen. And Luther, please come in. She opens the door all the way and stands aside. You have a lovely home, Liana smiles at Edith once we are in the living room. Thank you, she replies. Please, have a seat. Can I offer you anything to drink? Not for me, thank you, she says politely and touches her belly. This little one keeps sitting on my bladder. I remember those days, she giggles. There is a lot of discomfort and pain before you get to the joys of motherhood. To what do I owe this honor, she sits opposite me and Liana. It's not every day I receive people from the Alpha family. We have questions about Nikki, I rest my elbows on my knees and intertwine my angers. Oh, my, Edith looks nervously from me to Liana. Did she do something wrong? Not at all, she's a lovely girl, I put her to ease. It's about her biological father. Oh, Edith's eyes turn stormy before she looks at her fingers. Nikki believes I'm her brother, my voice is calm and steady. She said that. Edith's head jerks up and stares at me with a pale face. She overheard a conversation between you and Sam. Liana continues. That child, Edith shakes her head and sighs heavily. I cannot tell you how many times I've told her not to eavesdrop and mind her own business. Edith, I say patiently. Please help me understand what's going on. It's important to me. You and Nicolette aren't related, she says after a moment with a stoic face. She overheard a conversation added two and two and got forty-four. Sam and I weren't talking about her you were talking about Missy, Liana says, 
and Edith pales a little more. Well she clears her throat uncomfortably. I guess you know everything. Not everything, I smile. That's why we're here. We need your help to LL in the blanks. What do you know? Edith asks and crosses her arms in front of her chest. She is obviously reluctant to have this conversation. My father admitted to having an affair, I reply. Edith came to him with a baby in her arms and he paid her to disappear. Typical, Edith snorts and rolls her eyes. I'm sorry, Luther, but your dad is lying. He didn't pay Edith to disappear, he paid her to get an abortion. Are you serious? Liana gasps as she wraps her arms around her womb as if to protect her unborn child from the word. That doesn't make sense, I shake my head to clear my mind. How would my father know it's a girl if he paid for an abortion? And two million is a bit much for an abortion, don't you think? Happy to know you can put a price on a baby's life, Edith's mouth pulls into a thin line and her eyes turn cold. That's not what I meant, I hold up my hands defensively. But two million sounds much more than child support than an abortion. Edith looks at me for a moment before she lowers her gaze. I'm sorry, she says after a while and looks at me again. But you remind me of your father, and I got defensive. You know Gary? Liana asks and I can tell her mind is racing. No, she shakes her head. I only saw him when he came to the restaurant. Gary charmed Edith's panties off, so to speak. She was head over heels in love with him. When she learned she was pregnant, she was overjoyed. But reality kicked in quickly when Gary gave her money and instructions to get rid of it. Edith was hurt and furious. So, she took the money and placed it in an account for the baby. After Missy was born, she went to see him. It gave her immense joy to see his shock when she showed him his baby. Did he try to contact Edith again after that? Liana asks. Or his daughter? I don't know, she shrugs. He came to the restaurant a couple of times, but Edith would hide, and we would lie and tell him it's her day off or something. As far as I know, they never spoke again after that. No wonder my mother was so furious, I mumble when the realization hits me. Not only did he cheat on her, but Dad also paid for an abortion that never happened. Edith won, and my mother hates losing. Edith got her revenge, she grins sourly. She didn't just deposit the money. Only one person is allowed to make a withdrawal missy. She didn't use a cent, so he couldn't accuse her of stealing or whatever. And Gary couldn't dare ask back the money. If he tried to get it back, it would have become public knowledge that he paid a woman for an abortion in a state where abortions are illegal. The scandal for the Alpha family would have been irreparable. Is that why he gave her so much? Frown. Because she had to travel out of state to get the abortion. Partially, she grins. And partly because Edith sort of blackmailed him for that amount. Just one last question. Lyara's voice is icy, and I know she is upset with everything she learned. Why didn't you take Missy in when her mother died? I couldn't afford it, she replies stiff why and lifts her chin. I'm an Omega, married to an Omega. Back then Sam was a general worker in the factory. We didn't have money to feed another mouth. Edith had nothing and left nothing behind. Not even a life policy. Meanwhile, there are two million rotting in the bank and is no good to anybody. I tried, but Missy must be thirty to make a withdrawal. You left a mourning teenager to fend for herself because you couldn't lay your hands on her inheritance. Liana hisses. Luna, you don't understand, Edith says quickly. You don't know how bad it is when you have no clue to where and how you can get food for your child let alone somebody else's. Spare me the drama Liana stands up. 
I grew up in a trailer park with my parents and a brother. I know Nanchal struggles and it's doable. I did try, Edith defends herself. But it didn't matter how we looked at it, we couldn't feed Missy. She was better off in foster care. You horrible woman, Liana snaps. Edith was your best friend and she trusted you with her child. How would you have felt if she dumped your child into the system? She should have thought of Missy when she deposited that money, Edith is red in the face. She had two million dollars, it wouldn't have killed her to allow the legal guardian to withdraw a couple of thousand to keep her child alive. Edith, I stand up and tower over her. You and Sam are no longer invited to my wedding. I would also strongly advise you to leave the pack. You're kicking us out for something that happened ten years ago. Edith gasps. I'm being kind, there is no joy in my smile. I want to do much worse. You kicked my sister out, now I'm repaying a favor. That's not fair, Edith shouts bewildered. You can't punish us for being poor. You knew who Missy is, I shout as I lose the last shred of my temper. You knew she was of alpha descent, and you did nothing to help her, all because of money. Get off your high horse, she snorts. It's not like your family didn't do anything to help her. I'm not making excuses for my father, my words are soft and calculated. What he did, was despicable. But in his defense, he has no idea Edith is dead. Nor does he know where his daughter is. However, that's irrelevant. He failed his daughter just like you failed Edith and Missy. I was a child when all of this happened, but I'm not anymore and will ex the mistakes of your generation. Let's go, I take Liana by the elbow before turning back to Edith. You better start packing. If you're still here in 72 hours, there will be to pay. Chapter 130 Neither of us is talking as we drive home. The conversation is on repeat in my head. Maybe I was too harsh on Edith. I was not there, I do not know who it was for her back then. There is a real possibility that Sam said no. How many men are willing to raise a stranger's child? But Edith said one word which pushed me over the edge abortion. You look displeased. Do you think I overreacted? Luther asks thoughtfully. Should we turn around and tell her I changed my mind? No, I shake my head. It will make you look weak and indecisive. If she comes to you, you can reconsider. But you're disagreeing with my decision, Luther grins wryly. Not necessarily, I sigh. With the cold facts on the table, I agree. But we don't know what happened. Things might not be as straightforward as it seems. Missy told us she never saw them again after they moved, Luther reasons. Which means Missy didn't spend so much as a day in her care. Nikki said Sam earned enough for Edith to be a stay-at-home mom. And Edith told us she tried to get access to the money but couldn't. To me, it's simple. Edith only wanted the money. She didn't even try to help. She doesn't care about Missy. I agree, I turned to face him. I told you yesterday that I don't think Edith is a good person. I do feel bad for allowing my personal feelings and hormones to get the better of me and explode like that. I could have still said it, just nicer. But you're right. Nobody picks a guardian they don't trust. Edith Chester betrayed that trust when she didn't sit down with Missy and explain to her what was going on. She was only 15 and lost the only person she could call family. Maybe Adele was right, Luther looks devastated and disgusted with himself. I should have thought about my siblings' feelings before I pursued this. I started this to do good and now I'm destroying more people's lives. I should have left it where it was in the past. This isn't on you, I'll inhale deeply and close my eyes Brie Y to ND the right words. I also pushed for this. 
I'm the one who convinced Axel that we should support you. If, and that's a big if, something is being ruined, I'm to blame. I just wanted to do right by her, he says thoughtfully. But I never considered the impact it will have on others. On Nikki. You can exclude Nikki, I say firmly. She knew before you did, remember? At least, she thinks she knows. Even if you didn't pursue this, she would have been disillusioned at one point or another. She's not going to be happy about this, Luther shakes his head. She's so childishly optimistic about everything. Edith's to blame for that, not you, I point out. She should have been honest with her daughter. Come to think of it, you're not ruining Nikki or Missy's lives. The only people who want this buried, are the parents. It's their secrets you're exposing. Well, then, Luther parks the car. Let me go break the news to Nikki. Luther POV you're back, Nikki's face brightens up as Liana and I walk into the FCE. I've started with the seating arrangements. Wow, okay, Liana makes her eyes big at me as we look at the layout. Nikki took the liberty and seated herself at the family table. Nikki, we should talk, I say softly. I know, I know, she blushes. It's a little forward, but I kind of thought, well, hoped that you can announce that I'm your sister by then. Nikki, sit down, I say firmly as I lead her towards a couch. I spoke with your mother, I say as I sit opposite her. I bet she was surprised to see you Nikki beams. And happy. She was overjoyed when I told her about my new position in the Alpha House. She said that she was proud of me and that I belonged there. That's when I knew my suspicions were right. Nicolette, I'm not your brother, I say sharply, and she stares at me with shock. I wanted to be gentler when I delivered the news, but she was like a runaway train. I had to rip the bandage off and get it over with. I'm sorry, I continue softer. Your mother confirmed it. We're not related. I'm not your brother. But, but I heard them talking that night, she mumbles softly. They said, they didn't talk about you, I cut her off. Then, who's my father? She looks so hurt and devastated that I cannot help to feel sorry for her. I don't know, my voice is firm but gentle. You'll have to ask your mother. Oh, dear goddess, she sobs and buries her face in her hands. I'm sorry. I'm so embarrassed. You don't need to apologize, I stand up and sit next to her. This is not your fault, I say as I rub her back. It was a misunderstanding. I... I think I should go now, she sniffs and stands up. There's one more thing you should know, I say before she reaches the door. I asked your parents to leave the pack. What? She gasps as she turns to face me. Because of this? You can't. It's my fault, not theirs. It has nothing to do with you. I stand up and walk towards her. You don't have to leave the pack or this job. You've done nothing wrong. This is a lot, her bottom lip shivers as she looks up at the ceiling. I, um, I need some time. Take all the time you need, I rest my hands on her shoulders. I'll be right here when you're ready to talk and I promise, I will answer all your questions truthfully. I am sorry. Nikki. Thank you, she nods and steps back. I should go. I sigh hard and heavily as the door closes behind her. Crashing her fantasy was no fun. I should have told her why I evicted her parents, I turn to Liana. Goddess knows what bullshit they're going to pump into her head now. No Liana says softly. At this point, it wouldn't matter to her. She didn't even ask why you did it. She is in too much shock to absorb anything else. I meant what I said, 
I look Liana in the eyes. I am sorry it didn't work out for her. I know, she smiles gently. In time, she'll know it too. I need a drink, I grunt and walk to the cabinet. Luther, Liana says cautiously, and I look at her. You need to put a hold on this sister thing for a moment. Concentrate on the wedding. It's a little too late, don't you think? I snort as I pour myself a whiskey not for Missy, Liana reasons. You had to tell Nikki today. It would have been cruel to continue with the charade and keep her hopes up. Nicolette was getting ahead of herself, and if you hadn't stopped her, she could have come to your wedding as a bridesmaid for all we know. But Missy, she's settled and happy. Until she learns about the money, I grunt as I sit down. She could hate me when she learns the truth, and I didn't tell her. Then get to know her, Liana says rmly. Be a supportive friend. You'll know when the time is right to tell her. I stare at the amber liquid as I overthink Liana's words. I want to know my sister, but that does not mean she wants to know me. Okay, I look up at Liana. No more sister talk. From now on, we're only talking about the wedding. We can still talk about it, Liana laughs. We're just not involving other people. Am I sell SH for wanting to know her? I cannot help but ask. I mean, I want to know her because I want to move forward. That's a lot of I. No, Liana smiles compassionately. Because you're not doing it just for yourself. You also do it for her. You want Missy to be okay. Except for her mother dying, she seems any, I smile wryly. I know she didn't have it easy growing up, but at least her mother wasn't an alcoholic. Her mother loved her. She had a great mother and role model. It comforting to know my dad didn't ruin that for her. It makes me despise my dad even more, knowing he wanted Edith to have an abortion. That's the part that got to me, Liana admits. My mother wanted to abort me, and she would have if she had the opportunity. Instead, I was born, unwanted and unloved by her. Connor was unplanned, and I hate to admit it, but I thought about abortion. Not because I didn't want him, but at that time I didn't know Axel was my mate or that he loved me. Financially, I couldn't raise a child by myself. Then I got sick, and I realized that I wanted that baby no matter what. So, every time I hear that dreadful word, I feel guilty and ashamed I never knew that. I look at her in shock. It's not my proudest moment, her smile is sour. And I'll probably always hate myself for those thoughts. But you didn't do it, I try to cheer her up. You, I should go, she cuts me off quickly and marches towards the door. Concentrate on the wedding. Everything has been ordered and organized. All you must do is make it happen. Chapter 131 Axel POV Hey, you, I smile brightly as I walk towards Liana and Connor. She laid a blanket on the grass in the backyard and now she is blowing bubbles as Connor tries catching it. But he just started walking and is falling more often than catching a bubble. This looks fun, can I join? That better be a statement and not a question, she grins and hands me a bottle of bubbles. You're home early. Adele thinks she made a breakthrough, my words are soft as I tell her about the discovery while I blow bubbles. We're waiting on more information before we act. I also told Luther to wait with this sister thing until after the wedding, she says softly. Why? I frown. Do you think it was a mistake looking for her? No, she shakes her head. It's important to Luther but it was an emotional day. I don't want it to consume him. Not when he promised Adele their dream wedding. Yes, because every little boy dreams about his wedding day, I tease her. Shame on you, 
she laughs and playfully shoves me against the shoulder. I think it's admirable what he's doing for her. Connor sees what she is doing and immediately decides he must join. Clumsily he climbs onto me and uses all his strength to push me to the ground. Quickly it becomes a wrestling game you win. You win. I exclaim, laying on my back with Connor on top of me. Connor laughs cheerfully as he cups my cheeks and squashes my face. You're both covered in bubbles and sticky, Liana laughs. You heard your mother, I get onto my feet with Connor in my arms. It's bath time, or you and I are in trouble. Not what I said, but okay, she rolls her eyes and stands up. I was thinking, I take her hand as we walk. Would you like to go on a date tonight? I'm sure I can convince mother to look after Connor. Yes, please, she says eagerly and clings to my arm. And we both know mother needs no convincing to take him. I know, I chuckle. It's getting him back, which would be the problem. Liana POV so, where are we going? I ask as we get into the car. You're much too pregnant for a wild night out, Axel grins. Or too domesticated. Are you calling me boring? I squint my eyes at him. No, he leans over and kisses me. I'm saying you're unfit for wine pairing or clubbing. Wine pairing would have been nice, I sigh dreamily. Tonight, you'll have to settle for an open-air theater near the city, he laughs. I can live with that, I place my hand on his thigh and revel in the feeling of his muscles moving under my hand as he drives. Thank you. Anything for you, my love, he smiles at me as we leave our borders. It's an eerily dark night, I mumble as I stare out of the window into the darkness. No moon or stars. I cannot even see the bridge which is supposed to be in sight by now. The universe is on my side, Axel smirks. I need a reason to keep you close. You don't need a reason, I laugh. I'll happily cling to you. My cell phone starts ringing before he can respond, and I reach for it. It's Luther, I read the name. Must be wedding, damn it. What's wrong? Axel asks concerned. I dropped my phone, I reply frustrated and try to get hold of it. But it slipped in between the seats, and I could only get my fingers in. Almost. Ugh. It slipped to the back. Leave it, Axel says firmly when I undo my seatbelt and turn around in my seat to reach to the back. You can call him from my phone. It's okay, I grunt as I worm between the seats. I almost, I am cut off by a deafening thud followed by screeching tires and the sound of shattering glass and crushing metal. I cannot help to scream when I am mercilessly tossed into the back seats, and the car swerves off the road. Desperately, I cling to the seats and steel myself until the car stops. It is dark and silent, and I loosen my grip on the seats. Axel, are you okay? I shout as I sit up, but he does not respond. Frantically, I search for the roof light and turn it on. Time stops turning and my blood freezes when I look at the horror in front of me. An unknown man has crushed through the windscreen. His upper body is on my seat and his feet are on Axel. Oh, goddess, Axel. I shout as life returns to me. He is covered in blood and glass. No, 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 I reach for his neck to feel his pulse. Oh, thank you. I sob when I feel his heartbeat underneath fingers. I take deep breaths to fight the hysteria as tears stream down my face while I search for my phone. But it is dark, and it is not where I last saw it. I scream out of fright when it starts ringing again and eagerly, I follow the sound and sob loudly when I see the screen's light. Luther, I shout into the phone when I finally get it from under the seat. Send help, please. We had an accident at the bridge before the city. 
send an ambulance, it's, it's Axel. He doesn't look good. Don't disconnect the call, Luther says urgently. Stay on the line with me until we get there. No, I argue. Call the ambulance. Adele has already done it, Luther's voice is calm and soothing. You were on speaker when I called. Oh, okay, I sniff and push my fingers through my hair. Are you hurt? He asks. No, I put the phone on speaker and put it next to me as I reach for Axel's pulse again. I was in the back of the car sort of. I was tossed around a little and I think I'm in shock, but that's it. Axel is still alive, but I don't know for how long. His pulse is weak. I reach over to the passenger seat and place my engers against the stranger's neck, but he is dead. A shiver rips through me and I pull my hand away. I lean forward and turn on the car's hazard lights. Can you tell me what happened? He asks. I don't know, I get out and walk around the car. I look at the headlights, bumper, and bonnet. I think we hit someone but the front of the car is unscathed. A man burst through our windshield and he's dead. I open Axel's door and pieces of glass fall at my feet. What's happening? Luther asks urgently. I'm trying to help Axel, I turn on my cell phone's light and shine on Axel's face. A sob rips through me and my bottom lip starts quivering. His beautiful face is full of cuts. I move the light down, but I cannot see much besides the stranger's feet and glass. I cannot find it, I say as I gently touch Axel's chest and abdomen. What are you looking for? Luther sounds impatient. I Axel's injury, I scoff as I reach underneath the man's feet. He's unconscious with a weak pulse but I cannot see the injury causing it. There are no deep lacerations he's bleeding from. It must be internal. Or he had a blow to his head, Luther suggests. How long until you're here? I grunt. Ten minutes or less, Luther replies. Okay, I exhale deeply and lay my fingers against Axel's neck. I close my eyes in relief when I feel his pulse. Axel, I whisper and softly touch his face. Please wake up. We're almost there, Liana, Luther comforts me. Hold on. Okay, my voice is thin and weak as I give in to the fear and devastation. Look down the road, Luther orders. Can you see our headlights? Reluctantly, I obey. I know he is only trying to keep me calm and distracted but I would much rather curl onto Axel's lap. Can you see us? Luther asks again. Why, yes, I mutter when I see the oncoming lights. Yes. I shout when I can also see red lights blinking. And the ambulance. I can see you. I disconnect the call and cry loudly as relief rushes through me. You're going to be okay, I clear my throat and wipe the tears as I take Axel's hand. Help is here. It's going to be any. Adele and Luther stop next to me with screeching tires and blinking hazards, followed by the ambulance. Come on, Adele pulls me away. Let the paramedics work, and you also need to be checked out. I'm any, I shake my head. No, you're not, Adele says softly and touches my forehead. You're bleeding. Chapter 132 the dark sky is illuminated with flickering lights from the vehicles and torches. People are talking loudly, shouting orders and scurrying around. I am sitting next to Liana in an ambulance as a paramedic attends to her wounds. Besides the head laceration, there are also cuts on her back and hands. Alana's heartbeat is still strong and steady, but she will have to be thoroughly checked out when she gets to the hospital. Why did you call? Liana's voice is hoarse from crying, but she is much calmer after the paramedic injected her with a light sedative. It's not important, 
I smile sympathetically as I take her bandaged hand in mine. Please, she clears her throat and looks towards the car where the paramedics are removing Axel. I need a distraction. Luther wanted your opinion on inviting his parents or not, I reply awkwardly. Discussing this seems so trivial at a time like this. Does he want them there? She winches a little when she turns towards me but does not make a sound. The adrenaline is starting to wear off, and soon she will feel every cut and bruise. I think he's too scared to admit to himself that he does, I sigh. Maybe he's too proud to reach out first. It's not pride, she looks back in Axel's direction. It's pain. They haven't apologized or shown remorse, and he doesn't want to be burned again. But he should invite them if he's up to it. He's getting married only once. I'll tell. I'm riding with Axel, she cuts me off and stands up. Her eyes are fixated on the gurney carrying Axel to the second ambulance. I sigh inwardly and follow her. I would have reacted exactly as Liana, but it worries me that she is so calm about everything. It is probably just the drugs, and I am not used to her in this state. My stomach turns when I look at Axel. He is pale and bloody, but thank goddess, he is still alive. Tell me about his injuries. I look at the paramedic from Moonstone. Both his arms are broken, he says softly. He also has broken ribs. We'll know the full extent once he's at the hospital. Thank you, I nod. Clear Moon's guards will escort you to the hospital. We don't want more incidents. Yes, Alpha, the paramedic gets in, and I smile at Liana as he closes the doors but she only stares at me with empty eyes while holding Axel's hand. What a night, I mumble and turn around. I walk to the car and watch as they pull the body out and place him on a gurney. If I ever doubted if there was such a thing as luck or divine intervention, I do not anymore. If Liana were still in her seat, she and Alana would have been dead for sure. The man is huge, and he would have crushed them. A photographer is still taking photos, and a couple of guys are waiting for him to finish before they can start cleaning up. I walk to the gurney with the covered body and pull away the canvas. I do not know what it is, but something is off about this man. For a moment, I stare at him, frowning before it strikes me. You, I call the closest person closer. Bring me a bottle of water and a rag. Hurry. Yes, Alpha, he responds and hurries away. It looks like a suicide, Luther says as he, David, and Neil join me. Axel didn't hit him. The man hands me the water and rag before returning to the group. I'm listening, I pour water onto the rag and gently wipe over the man's face. The front of the car isn't damaged, Luther continues. He jumped from the bridge and landed on them. This was completely random and a freak accident. It's not suicide, I sigh and point towards the deceased. It's homicide. No way, Luther mumbles as he leans closer to the man's face. GT, I see it. See what? David looks confused lack of blood and facial injuries, I reply. If he was alive before the fall, there would have been fresh cuts and blood. For a man who dived through a windshield, there should be bleeding lacerations. And look at the car. There's blood on Axel's seat and steering wheel but practically nothing on the passenger's side. So, he was dead before he hit the car. David frowns and leans over to get a closer look. I'm not a forensic investigator, but yes. I reply. This is weird, Neil scoffs. What sick kills a random dude to toss onto the Alpha's car? His death wasn't random, I point to the body. But landing on Axel's car was. Nobody knew they were going to the city tonight. The killers simply waited for the first car and dumped him. Killers. Neil frowns. 
How do you know there was more than one person? Look at him, I point to the gurney. Dragging his dead ass would be doable but picking him up and tossing him over would require more than one person. Should we call the police? David asks. I mean, this didn't happen on PAC territory, and it's their territory. Not yet, I shake my head. I don't want outsiders involved until we know who he is. David stands closer and takes a photo of the man. I don't know him, he says. But I will send the photo to Mike to run through our database. No need, Neil exhales deeply. He's one of ours. You know him. I look at him in surprise. No, Neil stands closer and pulls the man's sleeve up revealing a tattoo of a snake curled around the letter J. But I've seen him before and this tattoo confirms it. What does it represent? I ask as an ominous feeling settles in my gut. He was part of Jack's crew, Neil pulls down the sleeve and covers the man's face. Jack had a team executing certain tasks for him. They called themselves the Enforcers. Nobody knows exactly what they did and why Jack needed them. But there were rumors about murder and torture. The crew were tough and mean. Nobody messed with them. The old Beta, James, was their leader and the group disbanded after you killed him and Jack. How many of these crew members are left? I frown. Either the old crew members are behind his death, or they are next to die. I have no idea, Neil looks apologetic. The only people who can answer that question for certain, are crew members. Axel killed most of them when they refused to submit, and the rest is in hiding. I haven't seen this tattoo since Jack's death another mystery, I grunt and rub over my eyes. Okay, take the body to our morgue and start an investigation into who he was. On it. Neil nods and pushes the gurney. I'll help, David offers, and I watch them remove the body. What are you thinking? Luther asks softly next to me. I'm thinking that his death has something to do with the factory working overtime and Philip, I sigh. But we'll know soon enough. I'll get a crew to process the bridge for possible clues, Luther takes out his phone. Get Rena, I reply. She's new and young. There's no way she was part of Jack's special forces, and she impressed me with the beta tryouts. I look at the chaos surrounding me while Luther makes the call. Until Neil told me about the enforcers, I was certain that this was a freak accident. Now, I am not so sure. I know nothing of them or their abilities. I cannot rule out that they had the means to do such a horrid thing. Rena and her crew are on their way, Luther pulls me away from my thoughts. She'll ensure that nobody breathes a word about this. Thank you, I smile tiredly at him. Do you want to go to the hospital? Luther takes my hand and together we walk to our car. Just as much as you do, I grin. I'm worried about Axel, he frowns. He didn't look good. I know, I sigh heavily. But he's an alpha and will heal quickly. I'm more concerned about Liana and her state of mind. She seemed, numbed or something. They did give her a sedative, Luther points out as he opens the door for me. Might be, I'm not used to her being that passive, I say and get into the car. Luther gets behind the wheel and starts the engine. Adele, have faith, Luther reaches over and takes my hand. They'll be fine. Liana is a fighter. She's just in shock. Physically, yes, but I'm not so sure emotionally. You didn't see Liana, I look at him. During my year protecting her, I saw all her emotions. Through everything she endured, I never saw her so apathetic. Losing Axel might be too much for her to handle. The rest of the audiobook will be continued in the next episode. Join us on Patreon for early access or more great audiobooks. A link is provided in the video description.